Hi folks, I'm June with episode 2 of Nibbles and Mouse Bites. In this episode, we're going to cover the register to memory instructions like LDA, STA, STX, and the various addressing modes that they all support. We'll be doing a few of these as we go to fully cover the 6502 instruction set. Okay, let's get to it! The first instruction in our set of 6 is LDA, or Load Accumulator. This instruction has 8 different addressing modes. Some of these we've already seen or discussed, but I'll go over them in detail next. The first is Immediate Mode. This is just a fancy way of saying that the byte to load into A comes immediately after the opcode. This form of the instruction is 2 bytes long and takes 2 cycles to execute. The way we write this mode is LDA hash and then the data to load, in this case $FF. The next two modes load data from zero page. If you remember from the previous episode, zero page is the first 256 bytes of memory and the fastest to access in the 8502. The first of these two modes, zero page, is written as LDA and then the single byte address in the zero page. The leading zeros in the address are omitted. The second form of zero page addressing uses X as an offset from the address provided in the operand. Essentially, it's just like adding the value in X to the address to its left. We write this form as LDA, the address, and then comma X. The next three addressing modes are just variations on a theme. Like the zero page modes, these just load memory into the A register given an address and optionally X or Y to add to that address. Since they load from an absolute location, we use two bytes instead of one in the operand. Aside from the additional use of Y, all three absolute modes work the same way as zero page either fetching directly from the address given, or adding X or Y to the address before loading. The last two addressing modes we'll cover in a moment. But first, there is one catch to these modes. Two of the absolute and one of the indirect modes will take one cycle longer to execute if the resulting address crosses a page boundary. Every time one of these instructions is executed, the state of the negative and zero bits in the status register may change. If the most significant bit of the byte we load is 1, that indicates a negative number, and the negative bit will be set. Otherwise, it'll be clear. Likewise, if the byte we load is all zeros, the zero bit will be set. Mving on, the paired mnemonic to LDA is the STA, or Store Accumulator Mnemonic. This simply stores whatever is currently held in A to the address that we specify. The addressing modes are written and work the same way as LDA, except there's no immediate mode and the flags don't change. So now that we know the majority of how LDA and STA work, we should finish by covering the indirect addressing modes. The first of the two is the indexed indirect addressing mode. This is the mode that we saw earlier, labeled indirect X. This mode only works with the X register. Unlike other modes, this mode is written with parentheses around the address and the X. This mode works relative to zero page, which means the address given must be a single byte. So what does this mode actually do? Well, it's either still loading or storing data from A, but what it actually means is add the value in X to the address, look up the data at the address of that result, and then use that data as the address to load from. This sounds really complicated, but it's actually not much different than what we've seen before. In this example, we've preloaded X with the value 02, and we've dumped memory from 0 page offset 40 and location D0A0. When the indexed indirect form of LDA above is executed, the CPU does the following. First, it adds X to the 0 page address 40 to get the address 42 which contains the start of another address pointed to here. In this case, it's simply D0A0, stored in swapped or little-endian order. Next, 
The address stored here is loaded from low byte to high byte in an internal address buffer. Once the address is loaded, the CPU then uses it to look up the data to load into A and then loads it. Let's look at this in an example program that writes to four positions on the screen using this addressing mode. The first thing we have to do is prepare our pointers to the four positions on the screen. We can use zero page addresses 69 through 70 for this purpose. Remember that a pointer takes two bytes, so we can only fit four pointers in this region. We'll use addresses 054A, 0554, 06E4, and 06DA. Since the CPU loads these addresses in little Indian order, we have to store the bytes swapped in memory. To find memory addresses on the screen, I used a handy spreadsheet that automatically calculates the addresses. I'll provide a link to this in the description. Now that we have our pointers stored, we can write our program. The first thing we do is initialize A and X to zeros. Next, we use the indexed indirect mode for storing A to the address pointed to by location 69 plus X. Following that, we increment X twice so that we don't accidentally step into the middle of a pointer. Finally, we compare X with 8, the last offset that is valid for our pointers, and only loop if we haven't reached the end. The effect of this program is that we store screen code 0 to each location in memory, in turn. Okay, let's see this in action. Remember, the program isn't writing to these addresses directly. It's doing so indirectly via the pointers in zero page. If we change the pointers, we can change the locations the program writes to without changing the program. So now you can see how powerful indexed indirect addressing is. Try not to worry about the name, it's confusing and I think I've repeated this at least 20 times before I got it right. Just remember the order of operations. Play with it in the monitor and try to do something unique and let me know what you come up with in the comments below. Okay, so now that we have that addressing mode under our belts, let's get into the next confusing one. Indirect indexed. The first thing to know is that unlike the previous mode, indirect indexed only works with the Y register. The way we write this mode for instructions, though, is mnemonic parenthesis address parenthesis comma Y. This mode works similarly to the way indexed indirect does, but the order of operations is swapped. Essentially, indirect indexed means look up the address in zero page, add Y to the address stored there, and then store or fetch data at the resulting address. It's a bit easier to understand when diagrammed out, so let's do that like we did last time. In this example, we've preloaded Y with the value 0, 2, and we've dumped memory from the same two memory locations we used in the previous example. When the indirect indexed form of LDA above is executed, the CPU does the following. First, it loads the pointer at zero page address 40, which like before, contains the start of another address. Next, it loads the low byte first, followed by the high byte into a temporary address buffer. Once this is done, it has the base address and is ready for the next step. Next, the CPU adds the value in Y to the address, offsetting from the base address. Finally, the CPU then uses the result to look up the data to load into A, and then loads it. Okay, let's use this to write a program that draws two whole lines at different parts of the screen. Like before, we first have to set up our pointers to memory. We'll use the same region of 69 to 70 in zero page to store them, since we know it's safe. 
the addresses we'll use are 0400 hex and 07C0 hex. Again, I've pre-calculated these addresses using the spreadsheet to correspond with the first and last lines of text on the screen. Once we've stored our pointers, we can get back into the program. Again, we start off by initializing A and Y to zero. Next, we store A using the indirect indexed mode to the addresses stored at 69 and 6B, offset by Y. After storing, we then increment Y by 1, since we want to draw the line all the way across the screen. We then compare Y with hex 28 to see if we've reached the edge of the screen. If we haven't, we go back and loop. Unlike before, this program doesn't iterate through the pointers in zero page. It simply offsets from the pointers stored in zero page instead. Okay, let's see this in action. Again, the program is using pointers in memory rather than hard-coded values, so if we change these pointers, we change the effect without changing the program. And just to prove it's not magical, if we set those pointers to odd locations that don't line up with the screen, you can see that it just wraps around. So that's the last confusing addressing mode. Both of these will prove to be very useful when we get into writing the game in the main series. To round this out, let's finish up with the register to memory instructions for both X and Y. Unlike the memory to register instructions for A, X and Y are significantly less functional. To begin with, load X or LDX only supports five different addressing modes. Of these five, only immediate, zero page, and absolute with Y offsets are possible. Like LDA, on load, this instruction will affect the zero and negative flags in the status register. LDX's cousin, load Y or LDY, is a near mirror image. The same five addressing modes are available, but using X instead. Again, like LDX and LDA before that, LDY will affect the negative and zero bits in the status register. Second to last is the storex or STX instruction. This only supports three addressing modes, zero page, zero page offset, and absolute. And lastly is the store Y or STY instruction. This is effectively a mirror image of the STX instruction with exactly the same modes, but with X subbed for Y. Well, there you have it. You should know just about everything I know about the registered memory instructions at this point. Remember, the more you play, the better you'll get, so try not to get frustrated and bang on that monitor as hard as you can. Before I go, I'd like to give a shout out to all my patrons. David Scott, Leif Kaland, Giacomo Amoroso, Huggy176, Nicole Express, and Clifford Wolf. You're all amazing. You keep me inspired and engaged, and I hope this series is up to your expectations. Thank you so much! And with that being said, I'll see you in the next episode.